What's up everyone? Greg here from Sonic DNA with another Honest Gear review. Uh, we're going to take a deep dive now into this guy. Just a regular speaker, right? Guitar speaker? No. This is the new Celestion, well, new to me, F12X200. And you might be asking, what's different about it? As you can see right here in this lighting, if I can get it to come up, let me work on this view a little bit. Yeah, right there, that inner circle. That is a high compression driver built into a standard rib speaker. And if you turn around and look at the back, it is deep. And this will not work with every cab, so check your cab space first. We're going even further, we'll see why it's deep. You see the uh, gray and black wire there? That goes to a crossover that goes to this compression driver. We're going beyond full range flat response to full range live response. So what this does, it goes into your typical cab. What I'll be using is this bottom boy here. It's got a pair of uh, ET65s in it now from Warehouse Guitar Speakers. I'm gonna take both of those out and I'm gonna put this guy in on one side. Oh, that's thick, that's loud, that's deep, listen. Yeah. I'm going to take this guy, I'm going to put it in there, and we're in the other side, we're going to take a typical guitar speaker that I like. I love my ET65s, but I also love this. This is the Texas Heat from the Patriot series, Eminence, another one of my favorite guitar speakers. And we're going to put it in there, and I'll hold them up now and show you the difference in the depth between... Yeah, you see how that magnet with the extra crossover on it? stuff stuck in my speaker cat hair but you know what that's one of the things about this channel I'm not gonna clean everything polish it up I have a big cat that runs around here he's over there sleeping right now his name is Ollie if you see him walk across the room we're not gonna edit that out if I got an itch I'm gonna scratch it that's just how we do it because this is raw unpolished unfiltered if this speaker sucks I'm gonna tell you it sucks these are designed to be used with the head rush the Kemper the G300 the Helix, any modeler that you got. I typically run the Head Rush, they're out of view right now, the FRFR 108s. So uh, I find that those, being a little bit more distance out, being in the plastic cab, I like the way they sound, but I'm going to see if there's an advantage to using a real cab. And I can already hear people right now, y'all can save it. You know, Don't you want to get away from a heavy cab? I don't. You may. I don't. You know, I like to experiment. I like to know what things sound like. I like the resonance of a wood cab, and I might like it more compared to the plastic of these head rush cabs. I may, I may not. We're going to find out. Is it right for you? Is it great? Does it suck? Does it do what it's supposed to do? If I plug it in with this Kemper Profiler, and I put it on the Kemper Cone feature where it can emulate the V30 or the Greenback or the Creamback, we're going to find all that out. And we're going to do it truthfully and honestly. This video is going to have no processing, no EQ. What I hear in the room, going through what the mics are in my simple Scarlett Focusrite interface, is what's going to come through to you. I am tired of reviews and demos of people that spruce things up and make them sound great. Case in point, this guy right here. I like it, but it's not what everybody in the demos made it out to be. But I don't want to get on this. This is for a different. This is for a different uh, video. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get off here, and we're gonna dive down into this cabinet. We're gonna take those ET65s out, and I'm gonna throw these guys in. I would like to remind you that all the gear that I demo and review is purchased by me. Nobody buys me anything. Nobody sends me anything. I will never accept anything. I don't want to do affiliate marketing. I don't want to be in anyone's pocket. And I don't want anyone in mine. I want to bring you the straight dope because this stuff is expensive and the economy sucks and every cent count. If it's trash, I'm going to tell you it's trash. If it's treasure, I'm going to tell you it's treasure. But you know what? That's just my opinions, unbiased. If you don't like them, I'm sorry. You don't have to let me know. You could just scroll right on through. And that's the beauty of the world we live in. So let me get to work here and I'll hit you back whenever I get these plugged in and we'll see how they sound. All right, so we're back. We got the F12X200 in the bottom, in the sealed part of this cabinet because it's half back, 
half open, half closed. And on the other side, I went in ahead and put the Eminence Texas Heat. Both speakers have an SM57 on them. And they're relatively right to the same spot, same distance. I'm using the amp clamps. Now from my head rush, which I'll show you here in a second, I'm running directly out and I'm running into the Seymour Duncan Power Stage 170. And from that I'm running to a splitter. And on the splitter is the EHX Switchblade Plus. And I have the speakers wired up individually. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to toggle between the Texas Heat and the new Celestion speaker. That way you'll get an idea of what one sounds like, what one's bringing to the table, and give you a baseline. So without further ado, we're going to go on down to the head rush. And I have a pretty basic little rig going on here. I'll show you what I got. What I'm running is the Lead 800 Bright. And all of my amp settings are stock as they would load in. The IR is a PRG, which is pre-roller greenback, 57 mic and a 160 mic and my hot glass expanded versions. And to be honest with you, these were made to work with your normal conventional speakers as well as FRFRs. That's why I run it into either my ET65s or my Texas Heat or a combination of both if I want. And Dynacomp is set to my SAG setting to replicate a little bit of that tube amp sag and there's my settings for it if you want to copy it you know nothing special so let's see what this sounds like here Now, as a reference, here's the eminence. Now, immediately you'll notice you're not hearing all the top end that you hear with the F12X200. That's because the F12X200 has that extra compression driver, the crossover at 3000 hertz, and it's bringing out all those highs. But you'll notice I have my high cut here set. I had it on 7500. Let's go all the way up to 20,000 and we'll see if we can dial that out and whenever it becomes audible across the range and the response of the speaker. <laughs> I hear it going away and in the room what I'm feeling from this thing is amazing I'll be quite honest with you it is amazing this for personal use I'll probably get another one I know my wife's gonna hate hearing that but these are probably gonna replace my FRFRs for normal use and I'll still build rigs on the FRFRs because that's what people have <laughs> Now let's throw that JRC in there to drive it up a little bit. I'm still getting lots of mids with it. So we're going to work around a little bit. I want some more master volume. I want the treble up. I'm going to take the mids down just a little bit. I know that's almost sacrilege with a Marshall. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn the bright on. Now, we're going to throw on some different speakers here, different impulse responses. This is a Sedano with an Eminence Legend and a V30. You're hearing that eminence very prominently in there on that one. Here's a, oh yeah, I left in a couple of head rush stock IRs to see how they sound. <laughs> to 
to me, their, their IRs just sound like they're in a bowl. I don't know. Something about them. And here's one of the Marshalls. <laughs> So I'm going to go now to a pre-made rig, discard the changes, and I'm running the uh, pre-roller greenback 121-160 HGX. Again, you'll see I've got my low cut up to 97 on this one, my high cut down to 72-24. Let's get on the rhythm scene. Like I said, it's all raw and uncut. <laughs> Comparing the F12 with, oddly enough, the Texas Heat from Eminence. Um, what I'm hearing in the room and what I'm going to have on the mics here is probably going to be different. And I can tell you here in the room, I wish that I could just bottle it up and send it out to you because it is probably the most responsive and the widest sound that I've heard from the head rush yet with my IRs, rigs, or anyone else. It's just, it's it's got that thing to it. I don't know how to describe it, you know what I mean? But um, let me know your thoughts on it. Let me know which one you prefer. Do you think that the F12X200 is gimmicky, or do you think it's a step in the right direction if it's something you can get behind? Anyway, like and subscribe, and uh, leave me your comments. Leave me your opinions down in the uh, comments. Appreciate it. See ya.